Right, so uh, yes, I've taken some time to uh, study environmental psychology because I believe that there is a science in uh, feng shui. It's, uh, it's not completely science, it's more art and there's a bit of science. But there's more and more uh, science sort of coming forward and um, believe it or not, there are probably about 12 or 14 scientific papers on feng shui specifically and there are probably about 100 uh, papers that mention feng shui. So it's happening. But uh, it's been going on for a long time. 4,000 years, uh, probably, and the environment psychology is going on just literally 400 years. So it's a new uh, sort of uh, discipline. But the definitions of uh, feng shui and uh, environment psychology are almost the same, just the wording is slightly different. So feng shui uh, sort of concerned with three types of luck, heavenly, human and earth, and uh, relationship between um, environments and people. And the same goes for um, uh, environment psychology. Um, actually, the quote by Winston Churchill, we shape our buildings thereafter they shape us, nicely kind of uh, summarized the Western view of, uh, um, of Feng Shui or environment psychology. And he's kind of been uh, branded as a godfather, grandfather of environment psychology. He was very fond of this um, quote and he mentioned many times. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a few uh, sort of examples how Feng Shui and environment psychology overlap. I haven't put in all the references, they're actually going to go be in my book called uh, The Science on Feng Shui that I will publish next year. So I didn't want to sort of, uh, the, the, the slides will be very long if I just put all the references. So a couple of sort of key principles and what uh, Feng Shui says and what environmental psychology says about that. So don't sit with your back to the door. Classic example, uh, sit or sleep with the power position. So that would be a power position, have a support of the wall, see the door, windows, and so on. Environment psychology has similar uh, uh, um, thing to say. When you sit or lie with your back to the door, you release actually stress hormones, cortisol. So obviously we know how to correct it, put a little mirror or shiny object. So when you're sleeping or uh, sitting with your back to the door, you actually see what's, what's happening behind you. Now, when you sit face to face with people, uh, actually releasing oxytocin, which is called love or bonding hormone, which is uh, 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 very important for creating relationships. So being in control is very important in Feng Shui. And uh, um, uh, K.B. Lim mentioned, you know, sleeping and sitting in, uh, in the right places or uh, in the right directions. But I think that sort of uh, physiologically uh, is important as well. So, um, so that's uh, one idea. To start with. Uh, the next one is uh, curves are good, sh uh, sharp edges are bad, cutting chi. So there's been so much research on that and uh, basically people prefer curves from rooms to cars to watches, logos, fonts, etc. Et there's loads of research suggesting that people actually lo love curves. We don't like sharp corners. We don't like pointing things. Like if I point at you now, it kind of feels uncomfortable. They found it more, uh, those curved uh, shape more peaceful, harmonious, beautiful, and safer. Yeah? Except in one study, they found that people prefer triangles for warning signs. Interesting, yeah? So we associate sharp things with uh, dangerous things with sharp things, knives and weapons, and then uh, that kind of confirmed um, uh, that as well. Um, and I think that's kind of uh, Ian McGillcrist, uh, who's a psychiatrist actually, uh, he's written a very, uh, very good book, probably a Bible now, uh, on brain, how brain works, and he sort of suggests that actually uh, um, um, having sort of square shapes doesn't bring the harmony in, in the environment. And that's a brilliant quote uh, so suggesting that as well. Have you seen this place recently in the papers? I might not see it. Uh, it like, looks like a Hobbit place. Yeah. Uh, Simon Dell, you can go to his website and see more of the images. Build this beautiful place, completely organic, in four months for 3,000 pounds completely organic. He got some land from, uh, uh, in Wales from somebody to look after the land. I want to sleep in that place. It's so beautiful inside. You get the vibe, you get the you know, fractality, you get the sort of coherence of the place. So there's a lot of different sort of uh, pictures. Go online and see, but it's just beautiful. And uh, cheap, why not? You know? So um, my, um, I, did, I did my uh, dissertation reaction on pavements, on the design of pavements. Some of you, uh, I've asked you to do this survey, uh, to look at those five uh, different pavements. And 
and um, what people found was that uh, sort of flowing uh, shapes and flowing cur curvy sort of uh, uh, shapes people prefer more than triangles, rectangular, and kind of more complex ones. So that kind of confirms. Uh, I had probably something like 250 people answering my survey, and um, so thank you if you answered my survey. So that just confirms, and we like that. We like us actually people. Uh, never walk in straight, straight lines. People don't like to walk in straight lines. When you look at people's uh, uh, you know, footprints in, on deserts, they're never straight. Yeah? We, we just sort of naturally like that sort of shapes. Yeah? So, but confrontational, as, uh, you know, just a few sort of uh, words about confrontation. So when you sit uh, opposite somebody, um, so obviously you're going to release uh, uh, some nice uh, oxytocin, but if you too confrontation, that, that could be stressful. So always position yourself at a slight angle. That will help, you know, when you, I mean, you probably have seen pe people who come uh, uh, to your door and ask for money or trying to sell you something. If they're clever, they will never st stand in front of you. They will always position yourself uh, it's kind of at a slight angle. That helps them to uh, create a better relationship and get more money. <laughs> uh, mirrors, um, so powerful uh, tool in uh, feng shui. Um, um, they've done a lot of studies uh, around that. Uh, generally speaking, the mirrors boost self-esteem, and uh, um, in children, but also in adults. Um, and I think the reason is that, kind of metaphorically speaking, they allow for some kind of self-reflection, reflection, give you feedback. So when you look at yourself in a mirror, you get immediate feedback, and that's how we learn. So um, it's a very useful uh, thing to remember where you place the mirrors and how, what they reflect and so on. But uh, in another study, uh, in kitchens where they place mirrors, uh, that showed 32% reduction in, uh, in consumption of unhealthy food. So again, it stimulates that reflective intelligence. That's probably one of the most important intelligence that we have that kind of helps us to learn. Uh, so you become more aware of your body and you're more likely to eat good food. So remember, you know, in the kitchen, mirrors very good. Um, right. Same goes for uh, uh, pictures of families, pictures of friends. Uh, we encourage people to have pictures of friends and families in different areas. But again, it's a, it's a kind of feedback. You know, you see what's happening in your life and kind of reflects uh, you know, who you are. I'm going to tell you uh, some research at the end of the, uh, of the talk and give you a little sort of homework to do, a home play to do later. So um, photographs of kids in different roles, you know, because they're growing, they're trying to find out who they are. And uh, that kind of helps them to understand who they can become. People enjoying themselves, uh, uh, you know, th there have been research in terms of happy images, how they trigger more success, and uh, smiling facing. The act of smiling will release endorphins, uh, happy hormones, and every cell in your body will really release those uh, hormones. But actually, uh, the, fa the fact of uh, looking at a happy smi uh, smiling face will do exactly the same because we've got something called mirror cells or mirror neurons that kind of mimic people's uh, uh, behavior. So, um, so that's a, a good idea to have around. But a uh, little tip, um, they've done the research um, uh, to do with wallets and they wanted to find out who, what sort of things people could put in the wallet to find out whether people, uh, they'll get a uh, uh, you know, return. And they have... Uh, you know, left wallets all over the place and uh, with different things. So some wallets have uh, a picture of a cute uh, puppy, some wallets have a picture of a contented uh, sort of family, and some wallets have uh, a picture of sort of, uh, you know, uh, elderly couple, and some wallets have a picture of a baby, a smiling baby. And guess what? Wallets who had a picture of a, a smiling baby were returned most, 35% success, you know. So just put that in your wallet <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Any, any picture, they will know that's your child or not child. And, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, I took a picture of, of this wall in my friend's house. And the whole wall, I had to put several sort of, you can get them in Ikea, I think, those magnetic uh, um, uh, boards. Because it took all kinds of things, what's happening in life. And it's a nice sort of, uh, you know, uh, reminder of what's going on and you can move and, and change and you know just help you to remember what's going on in your life because um, uh, we are very social beings you know that's how we work you know uh, um, in psychology there's only one psychology social psychology 
uh, and that's what uh, uh, the whole thing is about. And by creating bonds with, pe with people, actually you're going to be more successful in anything you, you, you do. So um, another uh, aspect of feng shui is how feng shui actually works. So I've been uh, doing feng shui for some time now and I'm sort of always thinking what are the sort of key uh, scientific sort of discoveries that we can uh, utilize to, to explain how it works. And my definition of feng shui is intention plus relationship plus ritual. And the Christian was talking about intention and alignment and re relationship could be anything, could be alignment, could be energy something that connects the intention with what we're actually doing. So that's my sort of definition of how feng shui formula, how feng shui works. But uh, I believe that feng shui works because of the placebo effect. So placebo, we know it's a fake pill that produces good results. Yeah? And uh, uh, most people think that's a bad thing. Actually, placebo is the best drug on this planet. Do you know that Almost half of the German doctors prescribe placebo. In Bavaria, it's 80% of doctors pres prescribe placebo because they work. It's as simple as that. It works. Yeah? Because your brain, as you've discovered earlier, just by smiling, you can release some hormones, uh, endorphins. Your brain can produce all the drugs that you want to uh, have in your body. Yeah? So whatever you believe will affect how things work. Yeah? So, and for the first time, they've done some meta studies on placebo research. For the first time, placebo outperforms all medicine, all allopathic medicine. It's outperformed by placebo. Unfortunately, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies can't make money out of it. They, they hate it. They hate placebo with ventures. Yeah? So, so that's, that's what uh, 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 placebo says. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. So, whatever you want, you can anchor that within your space and uh, make it happen. Uh, another uh, useful uh, scientific discovery is quantum theory. Quantum theory is probably the most successful uh, scientific theory that we have now uh, for two reasons. It allows uh, very accurate uh, predictions and it explains things, two things that science is good for, you know, explanation and uh, how things work and prediction. And quantum theory basically says that the observer influenced the observation. Yeah? We're all doing it all the time. And by thinking, oh, quantum theory is somewhere there, it's a kind of spooky phenomena that people sort of measure in some uh, labs. No, actually, it's happening in your body right now. Your body is quantized. A lot of processes in your body are completely quantum, not only on a physical level, but also on a minor. And the science kind of confirms that. So, and uh, the next point is change is good. And uh, there's an interesting uh, experiment at uh, uh, Hawthorne in, um, in America. It was a factory in Twentis where they've done a lot of research in environmental psychology. And they want to see uh, you know, how things can affect people's performance. Yeah? So they would change the lighting and they would see what happens. And obviously the productivity went uh, up. Yeah? So they would change the position of desks. Again, productivity would go up. Yeah? So they thought, well, well, well let's change uh, something different. Yeah? So they reduced the lighting, but they told people that the lighting was uh, better. So the lighting was actually lower. It was 70% uh, lower than, than normal. And the productivity went up. Placebo effect. Placebo effect. So basically, when you, and th that's what they discovered, uh, uh, that when people uh, are studied, they actually perform better. And, but that's because of the attention they are getting. And people who have children know that. <laughs> attention can grow people, yeah? So when give, you give people attention, actually it helps. There's some kind of, so intention and attention, I'm sure there is some kind of relationship to that. And uh, I love this uh, quote, uh, Niels Bohr, um, uh, famous uh, um, um, physician, uh, f uh, um, uh, prize, Nobel Prize winner in physics. Um, when they asked him why he used feng shui, and it was a Western feng shui, he actually had a horseshoe above his door. He said, I understand that it brings you luck, whether you believe in it or not. Try to escape that sort of uh, uh, um, paradox. Yeah? So, so I think that's an important aspect to remember. Whatever you're doing is going to work in one way or another. It depends how you frame it. So if you focus on negative things, guess, guess what? You might get negative things. Obviously, there are negative things in the environment. You know, we have pollution, we have electromagnetic radiation, and whether you believe in them or not, they will affect you. But other things are more in, in the sphere of, of the mind. Um, 
a lot of research into uh, nature, you know, environment psychology is done that for a long, long time, a uh, term called biophilia, and it's not the uh, Bjork uh, album, as she released an album called Bi Biophilia. Uh, it means basically love of life or love of living system, and it describes the relationship we have with, with the environment. And we love it. You know, it again triggers endorphin effect, lowers blood, uh, 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 blood pressure, boosts people's attention, yeah? accelerate patient recovery. Loads of studies in hospitals where they've discovered when people had a view of nature or park or trees, we recover quicker than people had the view of bricks. Yeah? And you'd be surprised how many people want to bring pets into the hospitals. They love pets. People want, and fish tank is one of the more popular sort of uh, features that. Uh, patients require in, in, um, in hospitals. And fish owners are the happiest. They've done a study in this country where they asked uh, people, pet owners, different pet owners, you know, dog owners, cat owners, spider owners, I don't know, whatever, and the fish, uh, fish owners were the happiest. So there's something about the fish that makes happy. So obviously it's nice to have a fish, but I guess because it kind of works on a, a mind level, when you have a picture of a fish, uh, or actual koi carp might be exactly the same. So you can, you can play with that. And obviously plants, loads of research uh, into plants, how they uh, affect people, boost creativity, again, reduce stress, and use good, you know, just one plant. One plant in an office will make a huge difference. Yeah? Okay, uh, directions. So, um, in Eastern Europe, uh, interesting enough, most people, you'll be surprised, I went to Estonia uh, uh, a few years ago, and I discovered 80% of Estonians were sleeping with, the, with their head towards the north. It's a, it's a folk sort of uh, uh, wisdom. And a lot, of, a lot of people do that, actually. But in this country as well, uh, um, um, uh, Dickens used to carry a compass wherever he uh, would go. He would carry a compass to make sure that he would sleep with his head towards north. Yeah? So because our body is a magnet, because we've got a lot of iron in our bodies in different parts, you know, obviously in blood, but also in liver, in spleen, and pancreas, and so on. So your body is a magnet. Yeah? So you naturally try to align yourself with the magnetic field of the Earth. So that's one view. But also animals, and uh, you pro uh, probably uh, were talking about the same sort of research, where they, they look at, uh, they took sort of Google Earth images of you know, places with a lot of uh, cows, and they wanted to find out how they sleep, basically. Yeah? So, and they found that most of the time, uh, it depends, you know, different regions, but most of the time they would align themselves with north. They would sleep towards north. Yeah? So there's something kind of uh, interesting in our nature to help us to uh, um, sort of align with, uh, with magnet. So obviously, uh, in different tradition, people have different sort of ideas about how. So, Vastu, uh, they kind of align so with South. Would you say that? Some try. Yeah, in, 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 yeah. yeah, in Indian tradition, people prefer to align themselves with the head towards the South. And obviously, campus uh, in China is the South is on the top. We, in this uh, uh, culture, we have it on the North. So there's different sort of cultural expression of that of uh, of that phenomenon. And also, we've got then astrology. So then you take your personal sort of view of how you were when you were born and what sort of influence uh, planetary uh, different planets have on your life. And for the first time, well, not for the first time, but uh, recently, actually, uh, Government of India is taking uh, astrology seriously. You can actually study, you can get a PhD in astrology in India. Actually, there are people already here in England as well who have PhD in Australia. So science kind of catching up with uh, the sort of ancient uh, perennial wisdom that uh, we had for a long, long time. Now, when you have a lot of metal around in your, uh, in your environment, so you've got a metal bed or metal springs, that will affect the electromagnetic fields around you as well. So you need to be careful when you're sort of measuring. You can actually do this simple experiment and just have a... Uh, just draw uh, a simple compass alongside your bed and see how the magnetic uh, uh, field fluctuates. Yeah? So actually metal will affect uh, you know, the magnetic field around you as well. Okay, so a couple of, sort of top uh, uh, tips to uh, close my talk. So sleep and sit in the power position and if you can't 
corrected with mirrors or shiny objects, um, have lots of contact with nature. Just go out, you know, try to have a view. If you can't have a view of nature, fake it with a picture, with an image. It, uh, it works. There was some study where actually it didn't make much difference whether people were having a beautiful picture uh, window with the view and actual image, exact image on the, on, uh, on the wall as a, as a, as a picture. The, there, was no, there was no difference. Um, and have lots of positive pictures of family and friends. Uh, very important to kind of make that connection and sort of uh, see that around you. So environment psychology, uh, again, coming back to uh, placebo, belief. If you have a strong belief, it will work. You know, we know that from psychology, we know that from quantum physics, we know that from other sort of uh, 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 sciences that uh, give us idea how belief can be uh, utilized in your life. And take control of your uh, environment. Control is a very important part in our lives. If you are in control of your environment, then you're actually going to prosper. And the last one is express your many identities. So I'm going to uh, tell you uh, about one research that uh, has been done recently and uh, just shows how much power we have just uh, by thinking about who we are. So there were three groups. There were three groups. Uh, it was done on students. Most research is done on students. And um, the first group had to uh, list one identity. So they had to write it down or think about one identity. So let's say a student. Yeah? The second group, group had to list three, three identities. Yeah? So let's say a student, a mother, and British, three identities. And the third group had to list five identities. So student, mother, British, uh, Buddhist, and surfer, let's say. Yeah? So you got five, five. And then they tested their resilience. The way to test the resilience, and you can uh, do it at home, is to put your non-dominant hand in freezing water and time it how long you can hold it. Yeah? <laughs> it's for fun. Yeah? So that's what they did. And guess what? The group that listed five identities, no problem. The group that had only white identity, one identity, had difficulty doing this task. Yeah? So the more identities we are aware of, the more powerful we become. So this is a little home play for tonight or for lunch. Uh, write down as many identities as you have. Any roles that can become identity, write a list, because it will make you more resilient, that's uh, uh, proven. And then look around in your environment and see whether they're reflective in the environment. So you can have it you know, as pictures, as objects, everything you like and do will be reflected in your environment. And if particular then it's not reflected, just do something to see, to anchor that, uh, that change in your environment, see how it works. And especially for children, it's very important. If you have children, try to do that as well for them because they have difficulty understanding who they are. And by developing that sort of thinking, uh, it will help them to become better people and more resilient. So um, that's, um, that's my talk, really. And uh, information will be available more, uh, with all the references in, in my book, The Science of Feng Shui. Uh, Feng Shui meets environmental psychology. Um, any questions? Um, when you talked about the placebo effect, um, traditionally um, the patient doesn't know whether they're being given oh, yes. a drug or whether they're being given a sugar pill. And probably the doctors you were talking about in Bavaria gave sugar pills, but the patients didn't know they were mm. getting sugar pills. Yeah. If you compare that with Niels Bohr, the, the quantum physicist, with his horseshoe, yes. he appeared not to believe necessarily that it did work. Yes. Uh, good, good question. So the question was, you know, if people know about the placebo, will it have the same effect? So most of the time, it's, double, it's called double-blind studies where the patient doesn't know and the doctor doesn't know. But actually, the effect works, whether the patient knows or, uh, or the doctor uh, knows. They've done studies where patients knew they were giving a placebo, this is a placebo, this is a sugar pill, it worked even better. For some, <laughs> for, some, uh, for some illnesses, it worked even better, knowing that you're getting a placebo. It's amazing. Yeah? So the problem with placebo is that you, know, you have to remove yourself so far away from knowing what's going on. So there are quadruple placebo studies that doctor doesn't know, the patient doesn't know, nobody knows in the <laughs> end. Yeah? So some machine randomly assigned things. Yeah? It's still, there's an effect because of the quantum field. There's, a, there's also the white coat placebo. Yeah, the white copulas here. So that I mentioned attention. 
And that's what we do as consultants. We give people a lot of attention. Normally, when you go to a doctor, you get sort of 15 minutes or 10 minutes, you know, and then a pill, yeah? And if the pill looks good, you get better results. That's another study, you know. <laughs> Colorful pills, good branding helps, you know, to, to, now, to boost. I found out that if, uh, in hospitals, if the doctors don't wear a white coat, or if they do wear a white coat, the patients recover quicker than if they don't. Oh, that's fun. So there's fashion now for doctors to go and see patients without wearing a white coat. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, yeah. So that's, uh, that's a good point because of the, probably uh, do, uh, um, um, Dr. House Phil, yeah. So because he's not wearing a coat, it kind of makes, <laughs> makes it more cool, yeah. So yeah, there are lots of different things, but it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or not, it will still work, yes, because of the morphic field. So certain rituals will work better than others. So in, uh, in Chinese culture, uh, in Eastern culture, number four has bad reputation. Yeah, for obvious reasons, because it sounds the, the, like the word deaf. And if I was from that culture, I might have a problem with that. Yeah? But I'm not. It's not going to affect me. It doesn't, it's, it's completely culture-specific phenomena. You could call this superstition, because it's culture-specific. We're talking about universal things like placebo. It works everywhere. And the studies uh, they've done all over the world prove that actually placebo works. And it's a good thing. It works. It's not a bad thing. You know, obviously, the pharmaceutical companies don't like it, but that's their problem. You know. So, any, any other questions? Yeah. So the question is whether the placebo works over a long time. That's a good question because that uh, uh, Hofton effect that in that factory, what they discovered, the change, when they make a change, the productivity would go to a certain level and then plateau. They had to do another change. So those changes are kind of show. That's why we need to change your environment all the time. MOT, at least once a year, you need to do something, change things, it will help because we get used to it. With, with whatever you're doing, it will plateau. Whatever amazing things you're doing, you get used to uh, doing that. Reply. So it's a continuous process. That's why change. That's why you know change is is, is good. Yeah. Mm. I don't know whether that answered my question. So you need to so certain things will work for a long time. So if if you sleep in a good uh, position and there's no geopathic stress and like that will work. Yes. But if you're making changes, and obviously in, in Feng Shui, you know that the, cha the, the change happens every, you know, with, with, uh, with the moon cycle and then with seasons and the yearly cycle and so on and so on. So you need, to, you need to actually remember that, you know, that we are changing. We can't sort of have it fixed forever, yeah? Yeah, with the Hawthorne effect, did they find that it rose, plateaued, and then maybe fell a bit after a while, or just plateaued and then the next change would rise and rise and rise? And rise? Yeah, because the, the study was done in, the, the, actually, that's a good question because uh, they, were, they were doing lots of experiments, so uh, they could have uh, been sort of a, a fall in the productivity, and I'm sure that would happen. Yeah. Because from other studies, I know there's always a fall, yeah? And you need to do something, so you need to, uh, you need to remember that, you know? You need to sort of enhance your environment in whatever way, you know, uh, you can, yeah. Um, feng Shui is obviously very, chi very Chinese. Well, people who built St. Paul's Cathedral and uh, uh, Christian was giving you a good example. It's, it's the same principle. The expression is different. It's like we have different. Uh, we have one cuisine, one uh, sort of cooking. Yeah, we, ha we just cook food. But then the expression in India I have Indian cooking for whatever reason in China and Japan and other countries have different. So it's a different expression, but it's the same. It's kind of the same universal principle around behind it. Yeah. So people who built beautiful buildings or Stonehenge, they use Feng Shui. Just a name. They use maybe another name, geomancy. Or, and uh, Feng Shui society is really, that's the main uh, vision of Feng Shui society, to make it accessible in any culture. But the science help to explain for people who have a problem with the kind of Chinese way of doing things. Yeah? So. Someone asked about Joe Yap's um, annual um, biannual a couple of weeks ago. And with regard to placebo effect, he, he makes changes every year. Mm. 
So yeah, so the, 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 to take that uh, sort of wisdom, uh, so uh, environment psychology says it doesn't matter what change. We add intention. So if you do it with an intention that has some meaning, I think it will work better. <coughs> Yeah. So the same with, the, you know, from placebo, you know, if you give people a regular boring pill, it will work. But if you give them branded pill, nicely colorful, nice packaging, it will work better. So, but, you know, I'm sure there's a, there's a bigger sort of uh, view of, uh, of life in terms of energies and how things function that uh, help us to become more coherent and sort of aligned with what's, what's going on. So, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I'll be here if you are so one o'clock. So we'll meet back at two o'clock. Uh, we're starting with uh, four more uh, great presenters. So thank you very much.